Thanks for joining us. Michael, KC9PHK here on behalf of the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club, presenting the 2020 to 2024 Extra Class Question Pool. This is the third video in this series. We should have all of the videos up soon. Hopefully they'll be beneficial for your study. Uh, as I stated in the previous videos, reiterate that the due to the number of questions, we have just covered the question and the correct answer, not reading all the answers. And I'm also going to reiterate that the answers can change where they're at as far as place goes, A, B, C, or D. So you'll want to, if you're using this for memorization, don't memorize it in A, B, C, or D order. This video specifically covers sub-element E3 and E4. E3 starts out as radio wave propagation. Three exam questions come from the three groups. E3A, electromagnetic waves, earth, moon, earth communications, meteor scatter, microwave tropospheric and scatter propagation, aurora propagation, ionospheric propagation changes over the day, and circular polarization. E3A01 says, what is the approximate maximum separation measured along the surface of the Earth between two stations communicating by EME? The answer is 12,000 miles if the moon is visible by both stations. E3A02, what characterizes libration fading of an EME signal? The answer is a fluttery irregular fading. E3A03, when scheduling EME contacts, which of these conditions will generally result in the least path loss? Answer is when the moon is at perigee. E3A04, what do Hepburn maps predict? Answer is probability of tropospheric propagation. E3A05, tropospheric propagation of microwave signals often occurs in association with what phenomenon? warm and cold fronts. E3A06, what might help to restore contact when DX signals become too weak to copy across an entire HF band a few hours after sunset? Switch to a lower HF frequency. E3A07, atmospheric ducts capable of propagating microwave signals often form over what geographic feature? Correct answer is bodies of water. E3A08 says, when a meteor strikes the Earth's atmosphere, a cylindrical region of free electrons is formed at what layer of the ionosphere? Answer is the E layer. E3A09, which of the following frequency ranges is most suited for meteor scatter communications? Answer is 28 megahertz to 148 megahertz. E3A10, which type of atmospheric structure can create a path for microwave propagation? Answer is temperature inversion. E3A11 says, what is a typical range for tropospheric propagation of microwave signals? Answer is 100 miles to 300 miles. E3A12, what is the cause of auroral activity? Answer is the interaction in the E layer of charged particles from the sun with the Earth's magnetic field. E3A13, which of these emission modes is best for auroral propagation? Answer is CW. E3A14, what is meant by circularly polarized electromagnetic waves? Waves with a rotating electric field. E3B covers transequatorial propagation, long path, ordinary and extraordinary waves, chortle hop, Sporadic E mechanisms. E3B01 says, what is transequatorial propagation? Answer is propagation between two mid-latitude points at approximately the same distance north and south of the magnetic equator. E3B02, what is the approximate maximum range for signals using transequatorial propagation? Answer is 5,000 miles. E3B03, what is the best time of day for transequatorial propagation? Answer is afternoon or early evening. E3B04, what is meant by the terms extraordinary and ordinary waves? Independent waves created in the ionosphere that are elliptically polarized. E3B05, which amateur bands typically support long path propagation? 160 meters 
to 10 meters. E3B06, which of the following amateur bands most frequently provide long path propagation? That answer is 20 meters. E3B07, what happens to linearly polarized radio waves that split into ordinary and extraordinary waves in the ionosphere? They become elliptically polarized. E3B08 has been removed from the question pool. E3B09 says at what time of year is sporadic E propagation most likely to occur? Around the solstice, especially the summer solstice. E3B10, why is chortle hop propagation desirable? The signal experiences less loss compared to multi-hop using Earth as a reflector. E3B11, at what time of day can sporadic E propagation occur? The answer is any time. E3B12, what is the primary characteristic of chortle hop propagation? Successive ionospheric refractions without an in intermediate reflection from the ground. E3C covers radio horizon, ground wave, propagation prediction techniques and modeling, effects of space weather parameters on propagation. E3C01, what does the radio communication term ray tracing describe? It describes modeling a radio wave's path through the ionosphere. E3C02, what is indicated by a rising A or K index? And that means increasing disruption of the geomagnetic field. E3C03, which of the following signal paths is most likely to experience high levels of absorption when the A index and K index is elevated? Answer is polar. E3C04, what does the value of BZ, B sub Z represent? It? That represents the direction and strength of the interplanetary magnetic field. E3C05, what orientation of B sub Z increases the likelihood that incoming particles from the sun will cause disturbed conditions? The answer is southward orientation. E3C06, by how much does the UHF VHF radio horizon distance exceed geometric horizon? Answer is by approximately 15% of the distance. E3C07, which of the following descriptors indicates the greatest solar flare intensity? Answer is class X. E3C08, what does the space weather term G5 mean? An extreme geomagnetic storm. E3C09, how does the intensity of an X3 flare compare to that of an X2 flare? It is 50% greater. E3C10, what does the 304A solar parameter measure? UV emissions at 304 angstroms correlated to the solar flux index. E3C11, what does VOACAP software model? HF propagation. E3C12, how does the maximum range of ground wave propagation change when the signal frequency is increased? The answer is it decreases. E3C13, what type of polarization is best for ground wave propagation? The answer is vertical. E3C14, why does the radio path horizon distance exceed the geometric horizon? The answer is downward bending due to density variations in the atmosphere. E3C15, what might be indicated by a sudden rise in radio background noise across a large portion of the HF spectrum? The answer is a solar flare has occurred. Subelement E4, moving along to amateur practices. Five exam questions come from the five groups. First off, E4A, test equipment, analog and digital instruments. Spectrum analyzers, antenna analyzers, oscilloscopes, RF measurements, computer-aided measurements. E4A01, which of the following limits? The highest frequency signal that can be accurately displayed on a digital oscilloscope. Answer is A, the sampling rate of the analog to digital converter. 
E4A02, which of the following parameters does a spectrum analyzer display on the vertical and horizontal axis? The answer is RF amplitude and frequency. E4A03, which of the following test instruments is used to display spurious signals and intermodulation distortion products generated by an SSB transmitter? The answer is a spectrum analyzer. E4A04, how is the compensation of an oscilloscope probe typically adjusted? The correct answer is a square wave is displayed and the probe is adjusted until the horizontal portions of the displayed wave are as nearly flat as possible. E4A05, what is the purpose of the prescalar function on a frequency counter? It divides a higher frequency signal so the lower frequency counter can display the input frequency. E4A06, what is the effect on aliasing on a digital oscilloscope caused by setting the time base too slow? A false jittery low frequency version of the signal is displayed. E4A07, which of the following is an advantage of using an antenna analyzer compared to an SWR bridge to measure antenna SWR? Answer is B. Antenna analyzers do not need an external RF source. E4A08, which of the following measures SWR? Answer is an antenna analyzer. E4A09, which of the following is a good practice when using an oscilloscope probe? Answer is keep the signal ground connection of the probe as short as possible. E4A10, which of the following displays multiple digital signal states simultaneously? Answer is logic analyzer. E4A11, how should an antenna analyzer be connected when measuring antenna resonance and feed point impedance? The answer is connect the antenna feed line directly to the analyzer's connector. E4B is measurement techniques and limitations, instrument accuracy and performance limitations, probes, techniques to minimize errors, measurements of Q, instrument calibration, S parameters, vector network analyzers. E4B01 says, which of the following factors most affects the accuracy of a frequency counter? That answer is time base accuracy. E4B02, what is the significance of voltmeter sensitivity expressed in ohms per volt? The answer is the full scale reading of the voltmeter multiplied by its ohms per volt rating indicate the input impedance of the voltmeter. E4B03, which S parameter is equivalent to forward game? And that is S21. E4B04, which S parameter represents input port return loss or reflection coefficient equivalent to VSWR? Answer is S11. E4B05, what three test loads are used to calibrate an RF vector network analyzer? Answer short circuit, open circuit, and 50 ohms. E4B06, how much power is being absorbed by load when a directional power meter connected between a transmitter and terminating load reads 100 watts forward power and 25 watts reflected power? Answer is 75 watts. E4B07, what do the subscripts of S parameters represent? The port or ports at which measurements are made. E7B08, which of the following can be used to measure Q of a series tuned circuit? The answer is C, the bandwidth of the circuit's frequency response. E4B09, what is indicated if the current reading of an RF ammeter placed in series with the antenna feed line of a transmitter increases as the transmitter is tuned to resonance? The answer is there is more power going into the antenna. E4B10, which of the following methods measures intermodulation distortion in an SSB transmitter? Correct answer here is modulate the transmitter using two AF signals having non-harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a spectrum analyzer. E4B11, which of the following can be measured with the vector network analyzer? Answer is all of these choices are correct. So input impedance, output impedance, and reflection coefficient. E4C covers receiver performance characteristics, phase noise, noise floor, image rejection, MDS, signal to noise ratio, noise figure, reciprocal mixing, selectivity, effects of SDR 
receiver nonlinearity, and use of attenuators at low frequencies. E4C01, what is an effect of excessive phase noise in a receiver's local oscillator? Answer is D, it can combine with strong signals on nearby frequencies to generate interference. E4C02, which of the following receiver circuits can be effective in eliminating interference from strong out-of-band signals? Answer is a front-end filter or pre-selector. E4C03, what is the term for suppression in an FM receiver of one signal by another stronger signal on the same frequency? Answer is capture effect. E4C04, what is the noise figure of a receiver? Answer is the ratio in dB of noise generated by the receiver to the theoretical minimum noise. E4C05, what does a receiver floor, noise floor of negative 174 dBm represent? The theoretical noise in a 1 Hz bandwidth at the input of a perfect receiver at room temperature. E4C06, a CW receiver with ACG off, AGC off has an equivalent input noise power density of negative 174 dBm per hertz, what would the level of the unmodulated carrier input to the receiver that would yield an audio output SNR of 0 dB at 400 hertz noise bandwidth? Answer is negative 148 dBm. E4C07, what does MDS of a receiver represent? Answer is the minimum discernible signal. E4C08, an SWR SDR receiver is overloaded when input signals exceed what level? The reference voltage of the analog to digital converter. E4C09, which of the following choices is a good reason for selecting a high frequency for the design of an IF in a heterodyne, super heterodyne HF or VHF communications receiver? Answer is easier for front end circuitry to eliminate image responses. E4C10, what is the advantage of having a variety of receiver IF bandwidths from which to select? Answer is receive bandwidth can be set to match the modulation bandwidth, maximizing signal to noise ratio and minimizing interference. E4C11, why can an attenuator be used to reduce receiver overload on the lower frequency HF bands with little or no impact on signal to noise ratio? Answer is atmospheric noise is generally greater than internally generated noise even after attenuation. E4C12, which of the following has the greatest effect on an SDR receiver's dynamic range? Answer is analog to digital converter sample width in bits. E4C13, how does a narrow band roofing filter affect receiver performance? Answer is it performs dynamic range by attenuating strong signals near the receiver frequency. E4C14, what transmit frequency might generate an image response signal in a receiver tuned to 14.300 MHz and that uses a 455 kHz IF frequency? Answer is 15.210 MHz. E4C15, what is a reciprocal mixing? That is, local oscillator phase noise mixing with adjacent strong signals to create interference to a desired signal. E4D, receiver performance characteristics, blocking dynamic range, intermodulation and cross-modulation interference, third-order intercept, desensitization, and preselector. E4D01, what is meant by the term blocking dynamic range of a receiver? means the difference in dB between the noise floor and the level of an incoming signal that will cause 1 dB of game compressing. E4D02, which of the following describes problems caused by poor dynamic range in a receiver? Answer is spurious signals caused by cross-modulation and desensitization from strong adjacent signals. E4D03, how can intermodulation interference between two repeaters occur? Answer is when the repeaters are in close proximity and the signals mix in the final amplifier of one or both transmitters. E4D04, which of the following may reduce or eliminate intermodulation experience, 
interference in a repeater caused by another transmitter operating in close proximity? Answer is a properly terminated circulator at the output of the repeater's transmitter. E4D05, what transmitter frequencies would cause an intermodulation project product signal in a receiver tuned to 146.700 when a nearby station transmit on 146.520 MHz? Answer is 146.34 MHz to 1 and 146.61 MHz. E4D06, what is the term for spurious signals generated by the combination of two or more signals in a non-linear device or circuit? Answer is intermodulation. E4D07, which of the following reduces the likelihood of receiver desensitization? Answer is decrease the RF bandwidth of the receiver. E4D08, what causes intermodulation in an electric electronic circuit? Answer is nonlinear circuits or devices. E4D09, which what is the purpose of the preselector in a communications receiver? Answer is to increase projection, re, to increase rejection of signals outside the desired band. E4D10, what does a third order intercept level of 40 dBm mean with respect to receiver performance? It means a pair of 40 dBm input signals we th will theoretically generate a third order intermodulation product that has the same output amplitude as either of the input signals. E4D11, why are odd order intermodulation products created within a receiver of particular interest compared to other products? Odd order products of two signals in the band of interest are also likely to be within the band. E4D12, what is the term for the reduction in receiver sensitivity caused by strong signal near the received frequency? It's called desensitization. E4E says is about noise suppression and interference, system noise, electrical appliance noise, line noise, locating noise sources, DSP noise reduction, noise blankers, grounding and force signals, and common mode currents. E4E01, what problem can occur when using an automatic notch filter to remove interfering carriers while receiving CW signals? Answer is removal of the CW signal as well as the interfering carrier. E4E02, which of the following types of noise can often be reduced with digital signal processing noise filter? Answer is all of these are correct, so it can remove broadband white noise, ignition noise, and power line noise. E4E03, which of the following signals might a receiver noise blanker be able to remove from desired signals? Signals that appear across a wide bandwidth. E4E04, how can conducted and radiated noise caused by an automobile alternator be suppressed? Answer is by connecting the radio's power leads directly to the battery and by installing coaxial capacitors in line with alternator leads. E4, E05, how can radio frequency interference from an AC motor be suppressed? By installing a brute force AC line filter in series with the motor leads. E4, E06, what is one type of electrical interference that might be caused by a nearby personal computer? That answer is the appearance of an unstable modulated or unmodulated signals at specific frequencies. E4, E07, which of the following can cause shielded cables to radiate or receive interference? Common mode currents on the shield and conductors. E4, E08, what current flows equally on all conductors of an unshielded multi-conductor cable? Answer is common mode current. E4E09, what undesirable effect can occur when using an IF noise blanker? Answer is nearby signals may appear to be excessively wide even if they meet emission standards. E4E10, what might be the cause of a loud roaring or buzzing AC line interference that comes and goes at intervals? Answer is all of these are correct, which is arcing contacts in a thermostatically controlled device, a defective doorbell or doorbell transformer inside a nearby residence, or a multifunctioning illuminated 
advertising display. E4, E11. What could cause local AM broadcast band signals to combine to generate spurious signals in the MF or HF bands? Answers one or more of the broadcast stations is transmitting an overmodulated signal. And that will conclude sub-element E3 and E4. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like our videos, subscribe so you're aware of any new videos we release. Thank you.